Friday. So here we are inside the building. I see the sled equipment in the background. And there's the nausea right there. All set up, ready to go. Got our nausea computer all set up, ready. Oop, what's that? Select tips and tricks. Don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. Let's get this nausea program going. Okay, so we're going to go to the nausea icon and double click. And we're going to pass this security by saying yes. Now we're waiting for the connection to the internet which is not required to operate the nausea, but we like to make sure the computer is settled into place. So, first thing I'd like to explain is the features, what's on the front screen. Okay, we'll start over here. So this is the latest version number that we have for the nausea, version 1.8.3. This is the date it was installed. This is the time. Serial number of the nausea the vehicles and how many vehicles we've done reports for. We have two reports. If you want to update your nausea vehicle database, click on the coin stack right here to update this vehicle database. If you want to know what's behind anything, just hover over it or click on it. This is our measuring icon takes us to the opportunity to look up a vehicle database by vehicle, by model. If there's no database for this car, it won't show a measuring icon down here. It'll just give us the opportunity to measure by symmetry. If I want to measure this vehicle, I could just click right here. Tell it I want to start a symmetry plan from two pairs of symmetrical points. That's measuring two opposing ends of the car. We're going to make a box. But I would need to connect a Bluetooth. One click. So then we'll go back to the page where. Quick, we'll go back to our first screen. If I want to see the report, I click on the report program. Go right here and click on the last report I took. If I want to view it, I can go right here. I'll explain what this report is at a later time. Let's just see how you can find it. If you want to continue to measure this car, you can go right to this and say remeasure. Connect the Bluetooth and continue measuring. Let's quit. Let's close this. Okay. This is the parameters page. If I click on this icon, I can get to the area where I can feed in the customer, the ownership of the nausea, shop information right here. I can go here and do my software updates if I'd like. I can go click on this and do my vehicle database update. This is the second point I could do this at. This area gives me the opportunity to change the language. Okay. If I want to go here, this is where you initialize the Bluetooth. So if I was to have the computer, turn, the nausea turned on right now, I could do a search for the Bluetooth right here. We'll come back to this in a little bit. If I wanted to go here, there are some videos in the back that show you how to find out how to set the rail up on a bench, how to adjust the, the nausea on the gazelle and how to do a reset of the of the Bluetooth. This is where we connect our Bluetooth. 
this is private okay all right so now we have to go out and do a calibration of the nausea rail on the gazelle so the first thing we need to do is bring our nausea under the car and try to center it on the center line today we have a 2020 toyota camry on the two post lift and we have all the shields off the car so everything's exposed so let's bring our nausea up here and set. I need to turn the nozzle head 90 degrees parallel to the bar and park it so the laser that's right here is over the center support bar. On my way out to the front, I need to loosen these. Make sure my pins are floating. The next step is to adjust the tip so it just takes the air gap out of this point right down here. We just want to support the tip, but not lift it. Just tap on a little bit to see if it vibrates. Once the vibration's gone, it's set. Tighten the bottom nut. On the way back to the measuring head, retighten the two screws here that you loosened previously. Once you've made your adjustment on the note on the tip. Come back here and you tighten up your two screws. Once you've got your noggin head, all three points calibrated, you bring this back. Park the probe into the socket. Turn it on and wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And we're ready to go back up to the computer and the, connect the Bluetooth to the machine. Okay, so now we're ready to connect the Bluetooth. So we're going to the parameters page and do a search for it. Being on the parameters page, I need to go to the screwdriver and wrench, that's the maintenance, click Click on the magnifying glass to search for the Bluetooth. We have a green COM port that comes up. Click on the green COM port. Look to the right, you'll see the Bluetooth over here. It gets kind of foggy, right? So then you go over and you move the nausea in length. Once that happens, it's looking for it right now. We need to go move the, the nausea measuring head slightly lengthwise down the rail. You can see it on the screen. Okay? You can see the Bluetooth connection is now cleared up. We're ready to measure. I can also use this page to make, measure some points on the car even without any data. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So, if I just wanna look for a wheel setback, I can do that very quickly. You just find a point to start at. Make a measurement. Okay. So I now I have a number. Okay, now I'll go do the other side while we watch the screen.
Okay, so we have a deviation of about one millimeter. That's pretty good considering it's tied to the uh, a rubber mount, you know, it's a lower control arm point, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna go out of this page and go back to the measuring screen. Let's see if we can measure this car. Let's do a search for it. We have a Toyota. One click. Wait for it to do a search. Go to the drop down menu to choose the model. Camry XV70 sedan 2018 and forward. One click. As long as we have a vehicle that has a green clock right here, that means there's database behind it. I have two choices. I can make one click and the measuring icon will appear and I can just click on it. Or I could double click on this, either one. We have all four choices here available to us. Suspensions in, suspension out in the front, suspension out in the rear, suspension out in front and rear. We have the suspension in. Click on it. Now, the program gives us some options for points. Anything with these yellow circles floating around the point means that it's a safety point. That means it's good. Anything that's pink, like these two back here, 47 or 48, they're not good. And they're not symmetrical, evidently or they're too close or something, okay? I can use any of these yellow points or I can pick some of my own. I prefer to use pilot holes when I start and I uh, check this, so I'm gonna go over here and start with 21. I want you to read what's on the screen. Select the first point of a couple of symmetrical points. So I'll pick 21. The screen says, select the third point. Oh, it chose the second one for me. So I picked 23. The screen says, select the fourth point. So I picked 24. Or if there's damage in this area, I could pick something back here. Today, we're gonna to pick 24. The screen says, select the first point to measure. So I'm gonna to to select it. I wanna select the left front. It shows me a picture of it. Tells me the, the point number. Tells me the central longitude member, so it's giving me a description, and it's a pilot hole. It's also telling me what to use, an M18 socket. My socket choice is being available in the top drawer. I'm looking for a male socket M18. It says M18 right here, but if you notice, it's it's actually two sizes. I don't know if you can see that or not, folks, but it's a M18 and F14 both. Okay, can't get it in the right light, but maybe you can see it right there. Okay, the outside is 18, the inside is 14. So I have my proper sockets picked out for the points that I'm going to measure. We start at the left front. Pilot hole right here. You hear that sound? It's the acknowledgement of the point was taken. Does not matter the angle. As long as you don't move when you take the, the point. You notice I'm going from left to right. Doesn't really matter. I just prefer that. Okay. 
As you can see on the screen, I've got three points measured. Number 24 is flashing, waiting to be measured. I want you to notice when I go back to the other side of the screen here, which is nodule head, it changes the color of that point. It thinks it wants to measure because it says now it's red. When I move out of that field, it turns black because it's showing that it's been measured already and I'm not in the field with the measuring device. Okay. Let's measure our fourth point and see what happens. Okay, that's a confirmation that the point is good. All four points are good. We can continue to measure the car as needed. Okay, folks. So if you look at the screen, you can see we have our four leveling points right here. And it says okay. All right. Now, if I take my cursor and click on this thumb, I can expose all the numbers. Okay, so now it shows what the leveling points actually are by number. All right, so if I'm doing a report for a customer, don't necessarily want them to see numbers because an average customer that's driving a car has no idea that things aren't zero. They're going to see, they want to see zeros. So we recommend two printouts one with numbers and one without. Okay, so now let's, let's go measure some points. Okay, so how do I know what attachment do I need to put on my probe to measure some of these points? Well, if I'm just looking at the screen, I can follow my and take it up to a point and see if that's close. Oh, look at that. Automatic recognition of the point. Isn't that something? We have some more points here, I believe. Oh, 
I see. Okay, that point has a uh, brake line in the way, so I'm not able to get it without removing the clip that's holding it in place. So I'm going to move on from that point for right now. Let's go see what we got on the screen. Pretty nice report. The last few points here are behind the rear bumper, which is not off the car at this time. The one you see here in pink is at 4.7. That's a, that's a uh, cradle mounting point. And the car could be sagging just a little bit on that side. It's only one millimeter, 1.7 over the three millimeter tolerance that we like to use. It's very acceptable. I surely wouldn't try to fix the car for 1.7 millimeters. That was just a round of placement. That'd be uh, terrible. Uh, and this is the, the suspension point that I tried to measure over here. That's why it's still white. I can't get to it without taking off the door plate. All right. So let's see if we want to save this report. Close that window. But before we do that, let's see what else we can do. We can make this full screen. We can take a snapshot of it, what they call a screenshot. Keep this viewpoint. And then just close it right here and we'll pick it up later for the report. You can do it on either side. This top screen is a 3D viewpoint that's a controllable with the mouse. If you right click, you can change your viewpoint so you can look at it from anywhere you want. Okay, now pay close attention. There's a center line on this baby. You can zoom in and zoom out at will. If you want to check a dimension, such as this one, you can use your dimension distance tab. You look right here, it says distances. As I said earlier in the video, if you hover over a point, it'll tell you what's under it. Symmetry, others, if you go to others, and you want to start this report over, you'll still have the same best fit, which I haven't explained yet, but you can start do that right here. Uh, these features are for advanced users. This is live measuring. Switch to personal data mode, excuse me. This is live measuring. And this is to control the upper and lower screen that you can see on the display, how you want it to look. I'm gonna keep it as it is. If I had some damage in this front corner, I could go to this tab right here. It says indicate shocks. Click on it and I can indicate damage up here. So the report will say, hey, look up in this area. 
okay? Distance tab. What is this? Distance. This is an internal tape measure. Measured from, not measured from the data, but from the actual measurement. I can click this and come up here and I can get a measurement of length. I can verify it by this one. Do a comparison. <coughs> okay. So the, dis the difference between factory, we actually measured it, these numbers right here, 1388.3. Theoretically, it should be 1392.3, saying we have a difference of 4.1 millimeters. And the other one is 1393.4, indicating we have a one millimeter difference from factory what we ever expect okay and you can do that to X out the center sometimes it doesn't like to take so I have to zoom in on a little bit or take it across Try going this direction. There we go. Okay. So that's how you do your uh, distance tab and distance measurements. Alrighty. Once again, we can take some screenshots that we've now that we've got. Our, we've changed the picture, right? Okay. And save our report. Simply click on the customer data tab. Fill in all the information. It's already filled in the brand, the model. It's assigned an ID report. Uh, put in the technician's information here. Put in the owner of the car. License plate. It has to have something in the VIN number and that would be 17 characters. Okay, if you want to put some comments in here, you can. That comment will show up on the report where everybody can see it. If you want to do a confidential comment, you can say in here whatever you want. And it won't show up in the final report. Now, remember we took some screenshots earlier. And we want to add them to our report. So we go to the camera. And I go down here and I look at my, I have two options. One is to upload a photo from the computer. And the other is to take and add this 3D viewpoint that I just took pictures of. So now I choose which one of these I want. And then I say, yes, I want that one. And I go through that and I do this so I can, I can take it in any order I want. Okay. like something I can trash it unique okay go back to the report save it they're just closing it click on save report the long report Are you okay to view the report, I can print it to a PDF, or I can just look at it right here. And all the information that we just did is laid out nice and clean. Let's see if I can get a little closer for you folks. So you can see that. So you can see the full screen there. All the points that we measured. Anything that had a deflection that showed up in red right here. The other one is back here. That's in height. 
This one's in length. We have length, width, and height. Length, width, and height. Left side, right side. Top view, side view. Point to point measurements. Indicating the point to point measurement and all the dimensions. If you notice this right here, it says the theoretical is what it should be from the factory. Measured is what the actual results are. The difference between them is here. And these numbers here represent anything that crossed the center line, such as these here. There's the side, the viewpoints that we took. Okay, the report being done, you can save it to a PDF or print it to a printer. I'm going to print it to a PDF and I have to give it a name and save it on the side of the hard drive. Save it, then it's done.